So if you're a Thor node holder like myself, this video is for you. In today's video, I'm breaking down Gods of Asgard, the new Thor financial ecosystem play to earn NFT game that's launching at the end of May. This is something that's really exciting and I'm gonna break down exactly why, but basically they've created utility for the Thor token. In this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the NFTs, how I've made 1,000 pounds flipping the NFTs and how you can make passive income with these NFTs, everything you need to know about the play to one game and why this is so important for the Thor token holders. If this sounds like something you're interested in, then make sure you stick around for the video. What's going on guys, my name's Johnny and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm covering Gods of Asgard. Finally, the four financial system are launching their play to earn game. Why should you be excited? In today's video, I'm covering everything that you need to know about the game and why this affects the Thor token holders. So let's jump into it. What is Gods of Asgard? So Gods of Asgard is part of Thor Financial's utility roadmap where they're launching a play to earn game. This is a battle royale game that's going to be like Fortnite and Warzone, uh, where your players will battle each other and the winners will earn rewards. These rewards are a cryptocurrency token called ASG. So how it works? is you need an NFT which is a playable character and then you compete against each other and then each NFT has different traits and different characteristics and then they will be able to battle and the winners will earn a position in rankings and then this will earn you rewards in a cryptocurrency. So why do I think this is great for the node holders? It's because Thor is going to be utilized within the game as a governance token. So what this means is that Thor is going to become deflationary because they've said that as you use the Thor tokens to either use in summoning or in sacrificing then that Thor will be taken out of circulation and be moved to a treasury and therefore causing Thor to become a deflationary token as is a cap supply of 1 million Thor tokens. So why am I really excited and why I think you should be excited is because this is a perfect opportunity to earn some money. So I'm sure you've heard about NFTs and I'm sure you have a mild understanding that they have different rarities. So within the Gods of Asgard game you've got four rarities. You've got Heimdall, Freya, Thor and Odin, the same as the node tiers if you're a node holder. The different rarities will be able to earn you different amount of the in-game token, ASG, or the games that you win. So straight away, we've got an opportunity to make money because you have a random chance of minting one of the higher rarer NFTs and then instantly flipping them for a profit. Nice. Which is exactly what I did. So because I have God Mode enabled, which means that I have one of each tier of nodes, I got a God Mode pre-sale. And in this pre-sale, I had the opportunity to mint three NFTs. So that's exactly what I did. However, I only planned on minting one NFT, but because I got so lucky and minted a Thor, I instantly sold it and then I used the profits to then mint two more NFTs. So what was this? This was eight AVAX at the time was around 50 pounds. Then I was able to sell this one Thor NFT for 30 AVAX, giving me a profit of 28 AVAX after the NFT trade fees. So then I minted two more NFTs and guess what? I got so lucky. I minted another two Thor NFTs. So that leaves me with two Thor's NFTs plus a spare four AVAX. So this has obviously been extremely profitable for me. Technically, if I sell these other two Thor NFTs, then I'll be able to get myself about 2,600 profit for my portfolio, which is currently about 1,300 pounds, which is absolutely insane and is super exciting. However, let's break down how Gods of Asgard actually works and how this will be beneficial to the Thor token. So the Gods of Asgard game is gonna have its own token. And as I said before, you have this four tiers of NFTs that you can play with and the current Gen Zero are legendaries. So these earn you a higher percentage of the rewards within the game. For every win that you get in the game, you get paid in the in-game currency, which is ASG, and I'll pop a chart but the different rarities will earn you different number of ASG per win. Each day each character has a set number of energy meaning that there's only a certain number of plays that you can do per day so your earnings are capped for each NFT per day which has obviously incentivized people to have multiple NFTs potentially. A good example of the game like this is Thetan Arena where each character had a certain number of lives and you could only play them a certain number of times per day. This means that people can't go in and just milk it and obviously keeps the ecosystem balanced. So let's jump into how they've involved Thor with in the ecosystem and the different things that you can do with your NFTs later down the line and how they're launching the commons. So basically you've got three options. You've either got to rent out your NFTs, earning you passive income. There's not a lot of details on this, but I believe there'll be a predetermined percentage of the rewards that you decide to keep. And then the people who play using your character will also take a percentage. So they don't need to personally own the NFT to be able to earn from it. And then you don't have to play the game to be able to earn the rewards either. So it's a win-win for everyone. So you've got renting and then you've got sacrificing. 
something. Basically, you sacrifice a certain number of your NFTs and then this will produce you another NFT of the same rarity. And then you've got summoning. This is a bit like breeding where you combine a certain number of NFTs and then this will produce a lower rarity common. So this is important to distinguish between sacrificing and summoning. When you sacrifice your NFTs, the rarity of them stays the same. However, when you summon, it automatically produces a lower rarity. So if you combine two legendary NFTs, it summons a common, and if you sacrifice legendary NFTs, then they create a legendary NFT, if that makes sense. I'll jump into my computer and I'll break down that further. Right, so let's jump into the Medium article of the Gods of Asgard economy, so that I don't just spitball numbers off the top of my head and you can see exactly how the game works. So if you ever wanna find the Medium articles for anything, just go onto the project's website and it'll be like a little three dots like this you can see on the screen. So here it breaks down that they're going to bring out a new token, which is the ASG token that I briefly covered. And it's going to be a 1 million supply. And then as it's uncapped supply, so basically as the game rolls out and people start earning, then it'll start introducing more of the ASG token into circulation. Order, yeah, we plan to implement burning mechanism in the future to basically maintain the number of ASG on the market to make so it doesn't get oversaturated. But the important thing that I want to look at is the play to earn aspects. So here's gonna break down the different tiers of NFTs. So you've got the Odin, the Thor, the Heimdall and the Freya. And then here is exactly how it breaks down each one. So the Odin's gonna earn you 113 ASG per win, or I think that's the max cap per day. And then Thor is gonna earn you 41.58 and Freya 15 and uh, home door five so you can see that obviously the odin is going to be the rarest and it's also going to cost the most so if you mint an odin then you will be able to sell it for the most we're looking to make money on this channel so the best nft that you would like to mint would be an odin because as you can tell it should be at least double the price of a thor uh, nft and at least almost 10 times the price of a freya which would reflect on the nft trade which i'll show you in a bit so yeah, there's two types of NFTs. It's going to be legendaries and commons. The legendaries are Gen Zeros again through minting, which is available now on the website. It's live right now. So go check it out. There's a link in the description on how to mint. And then commons, which are gained from summoning using rare NFTs. Odin earns you the most ASG and therefore is the rarest. 4.44% chance of mint. And then it's the Thor with 13.33%. And then there's a Thraya, 36. And then there's a Heimdall, 45. So then obviously the amount of earnings will reflect the rarities because obviously an Odin is, only has a 4.4% chance of being minted. It's crazy to think that the Thor is actually a 13.3% chance and I managed to mint three out of three mints as that. So I'm, I'm pretty lucky at this rate with those statistics. So let's go through. So how summoning works. So call upon the Bifrost to summon additional support in the battlefield. Using your legendaries, you'll be able to summon common NFTs of lower kind. So here as an example, this is a chart I wanted to pop up earlier and set a spitball in from the top of my head. So if you use two Odins, then you'll be able to summon a common Thor. And then again, if you use an Odin and a Thor, so you always summon the rarity lower than yours. And then the difference between, and then it gives examples of costs. And then here you are. This is where the Thor token comes into consideration as the government's token. You'll be using Thor as part of the summon cost. So it's going to cost for every summon, it's going to cost two Thor. Giving one Thor utility and two, it's making Thor a deflationary token as it's taking these Thor tokens out of circulation and supply. Sacrifice. This is what I was saying earlier, where you can sacrifice your NFTs. One, it's a deflationary mechanism for NFTs. It's beneficial to the game and also the holders because you will be able to burn your NFTs to get a higher rarity NFT. And it's beneficial to the game because that obviously reduces the total limit supply of these NFTs, which then reduces the max emissions, etc. Sacrifice. An NFT will keep the same rarity as a sacrifice one. So basically, sacrificing will allow you to earn a higher tier, but same rarity. So as before, with the summon, it's a lower tier and also you get a common. So if you, uh, here you go. So if you sacrifice three Thors, then you'll get one Odin and the Odin will be a legendary as well. Additionally, there's a Thor cost and an ASG cost. So it all gives utility for the Thor token and also we're having a deflationary effect on the supply as well as giving utility for the ASG token and also deflationary for the number of NFTs as people will be burning their three NFTs to get one higher tier NFT. So this would be something that's be worth looking into. If you can look on the market and snipe some lower Heimdalls, for example, that are selling for super cheap at the minute, like four AVAX, you'll be able to combine these to get the next tier up. This could potentially be more profitable for you in the future. As the game launches, all these NFTs will have more utility and then this will probably push the price up. Additionally, remember that all these NFTs will be able to summon, if you've got two of them, be able to summon 
common versions of themselves. So it's definitely something to look out for. So renting, as we covered before, the owners will earn a split percentage of the profit, tokens earned per day. So it'll be good for players who don't want to play and additionally great for people who don't want to buy an NFT or can't afford an NFT. They can still take up part and they can still earn tokens without any upfront cost. So that's a finished covering of the economy of the game. So let's jump into why I think this is going to be great for Thor node holders and for Thor token holders. As a Thor investor, why should you be excited? I'm going to break down two things, additional revenue and utility. So one, utility. The Thor token is going to be used as a governance token within Gods of Asgard, meaning that it's going to cause Thor to become deflationary. We've got another project that we can compare how this affected the price of directly, which is a similar play to earn game. And it used the main token as a governance token. And then it had a secondary token. Where they paid out the rewards within game. This is Axie Infinity. If you pop up the graph, you'll see that unlike Thor, Axie's supply wasn't actually limited. So what the developers did is that they withheld a certain number of their tokens with like a kind of a soft cap and then as the price of the token increased they released further tokens down the line which is the same as what ASG would do however I believe that Thor is going to go parabolic because there's a max cap of Thor tokens at 1 million so this is just one example of the utility that the Thor financial ecosystem is trying to bring with this play to earn game additionally I know they're hoping to bring this NFT marketplace etc down the line but this is super exciting because on a 27 of May or towards the end of May, they're going to be launching their first proper utility for the Thor token, which is the Gods of Asgard game. So that's something as a Thor token holder, you should be really excited for because there's a chance that it could perform similar to the Axie token. And the Axie token went from about $5 all the way up to almost $160 at one point, just from the influx of players. And they had an unlimited token supply, whereas Thor has a 1 million cap. So take of that as you will, but I'm super excited. I'm super bullish and I'm thank God that I'm going to keep compounding my Odin nodes because there's a future node cap as well. And it's going to grow with time. Potentially, this could be one of the greatest investments Then in 10 years time. These nodes are capped and they're earning revenue from all these utilities. And it's going to, yeah, it's going to be a bright future potentially for our Thor holders. But we can only wish, remember, everything can go to zero. This is not financial advice. Two. It's got an additional stream of revenue. So the Gods of Asgard is obviously going to be profitable because they're going to have these NFTs and then in-game purchases, etc. I'm sure as it's going to have potions and food, etc. that you can buy, um, potentially weapons and stuff. So the additional revenue. And they've said that 30% of this additional revenue from the Gods of Asgard is going into Thor. And this is going to be used for the treasury, the rewards pool and buybacks, as well as further investments. So this is great because again, you're feeding back into the Thor ecosystem and it's going to have a positive effect on the Thor price. So that's my overall coverage. I think that these play to earn NFT games are great. And I do like the battle royale style with the Fortnite style games and Warzone. I know that they're super addictive and people really enjoy them. And the aspect that it's on the blockchain you're able to earn a cryptocurrency which you're then able to sell for actual money from playing this game and using these nfts additionally there's three ways of earning income you can obviously flip the nfts you can play them yourself or you can rent them out which is i think is insane i wonder what the roi time is going to be depending on what the price of the asg is and it's going to be a really exciting thing so make sure to subscribe to the channel like this video if you enjoyed it when the game releases i'm going to be playing the game and i'll give you an update on everything that you need to know about this game i'm super stoked i'm going to sell my two thors and I'm gonna try and do a couple more mints just so I can try to get an Odin. I'll keep you updated with what I do. That's a wrap on the video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one, your boys Gonskis.